Every year, Amazon gets more than 200,000 resumes for the various jobs they are hiring for. Google gets 10 times that with over 2 million resumes. Imagine being the HR managers responsible for vetting all those. That seems like an absolutely daunting task. But in the modern age we live in, this seems like a task that could be given over to something that could process those resumes nearly instantaneously, an artificial intelligence system. In fact, that's exactly what companies like Amazon and Google have tried in the past. The results were not what they expected. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, we're going to talk about gender bias in artificial intelligence. To be sure, there are many examples of bias in machine learning and AI systems, and I plan to make videos about those too. But for now, I want to focus on one big example in the world of resume vetting. After all, one of the goals of things like gender and racial equity is to ensure that everyone, regardless of their gender or race, has a fair shake at the most desirable jobs out there. But when companies let AI algorithms have a say at those decisions, bias has a sneaky way of creeping in. In this episode, I'm going to try and provide you with the intuition to understand how this type of bias could emerge, even when a big goal of these systems is to take potentially biased humans out of the equation altogether. On the face of it, it seems really odd that a computer program, which really is all that an AI system is, could exhibit gender bias. And to be clear, I'm going to assume, and I don't think this is a big assumption at all, that the coders who write AI resume vetting systems are not intentionally biased. I genuinely don't believe that they sit there and write code with the intent of harming women. And yet, as you'll see, that's exactly what winds up happening. So how can that be? How can we have unbiased coders, but end up with a biased system? To answer that, we need to think about how these systems work. I'm going to skip over all the complex math here, because to get the intuition, you really don't need that. Instead, let's try and understand what a supervised machine learning system is, which, to be clear, is the same thing as most AI systems. Basically, the goal of this kind of system is to be able to separate hits from misses. In the context of resumes, it's separating who gets an interview and who doesn't. And the way this works is that you first need what's called a training set of resumes. Basically, you need to go back to all the resumes that were vetted by humans and classify those as hits or misses. You just see which job candidates were advanced to an interview and which weren't. Then comes the tricky part. You have to pick out features of those resumes to train your AI system on. Features could be things like the title of a previous job, duration of employment, education level, undergraduate GPA, skills listed, hobbies, and so on. Basically, you build a system that can extract as much information from a resume as possible. In reality, you would have hundreds, if not thousands, of features extracted from each resume. Anyway, you then put all those features in a big black box. This is the key machine learning algorithm, and it can take a number of forms like a neural network, a random forest, or a decision tree. The point here is that what happens in the black box is often completely a mystery to everyone, including the coders who make it. All we know is that the black box can figure out how the features of each resume relate to how likely someone is to actually get an interview. And critically, this is all done with resumes that were already vetted by humans. Now, to be fair, the coder do know how the black box works in theory, but they don't have a clue about why their system makes the choices it makes. They just know that it can separate the resumes that were advanced to an interview from those that weren't with a pretty high degree of confidence. So the algorithm might decide that a resume with these features will get an interview, but a resume with these features won't. It won't tell you why it made that decision, but the idea is that based on that original human vetted data, it figures out what those humans were looking for when deciding on who to interview. This is the training stage of the algorithm, and we'll come back to it in a bit. Once we have this part done, then we let loose the AI system on new resumes, ones that have not been vetted by humans and ones that are new to the company. Now the AI system uses what it learned from these original human vetted resumes and applies that to these new ones. The hope is that this system will be way faster than humans would be and is just as good at picking out good candidates to interview. But where does bias come from? Before I answer that, if you could take a minute to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new content I put out, I'd really appreciate it. With that said, let's see how this type of algorithm can and often does result in bias. The first thing to note is that in virtually all tech companies, women are still underrepresented compared to men. For example, over the past eight years or so, women have made up at most around 30% of the workforce at Google. And if you look across all tech, that number is closer to 24%. 
we can come up with many reasons why this might be true. Now, one reason might be that HR managers are biased, making AI systems, which on the face of it, are free of explicit bias, ideal for helping with gender equity. That's actually one of the key reasons many companies are looking to AI systems and hiring, to avoid any explicit bias that might exist, be it against women or anyone else. Well, that's the hope anyway. So why might this gender imbalance be a problem for these AI resume vetting systems? Well, let's look back at how these systems work. Remember, the systems need to be taught what is considered a good and a bad candidate. And they are taught by feeding them resumes that were previously vetted by humans. And those humans are the ones who ultimately made the hiring decisions that led to an overwhelmingly male workforce. In other words, even though gender was never explicitly fed into these AI systems, they basically learned to prefer male applicants just like the humans before them did. After all, the whole point of these systems is to make them act like the very humans they are designed to replace. And if those humans had biases against women, then so will the algorithms that mimic them. To be really clear, I'm not actually suggesting that those original humans who preferred male applicants were actually explicitly biased against women. I mean, they could have been, but they don't need to be to get us to the same outcome. If those humans preferred candidates from male-dominated colleges, we'd see the same result. If they preferred resumes with words typically used by men, like executed and captured, we get the same outcome. If they preferred resumes from those who joined chess clubs, who happen to mostly be male, we get the same outcome. In other words, even without an explicit input of gender, the AI system is picking up on traits that are related to gender and applying those to the new candidates. It's not explicitly saying don't interview women, but it is saying don't interview people who look like this. And as it happens, because the human decisions that were used to train this system also made the same types of choices, people who look like this are women. And in case you think this is a pie in the sky type of situation, this is actually the exact thing that happened to Amazon in 2018, after which point they scrapped the system altogether and went back to human-based vetting, albeit hopefully with better efforts to minimize bias by those human resume vetters. So what you're seeing here is an example of a bad and in this case biased training set. The AI system can only be as good as the data it is trained on. And when that data is itself biased, even though one of the goals of using an AI system is to eliminate human biases, the system becomes just as bad as the humans before it. And this type of error has been documented in Google image search, medical treatments, parole decisions, and a whole lot more. When you have a biased training data set, you have a biased AI system. So where do we go from here? Is AI done for? Well, not quite. The good news is that people are becoming more and more aware of this problem, and they are trying much harder than they used to to ensure that these systems are trained on unbiased or at least less biased data. This is not an easy problem to fix, but we can be thankful that the effort is now out there. Now, I plan to make more of these videos highlighting other types of biases that creep into automated systems like this. Are there any that you want to know about? Some examples you maybe read about but don't quite get? Do you want to learn more about the approaches used to mitigate bias in AI systems? Well, leave a comment below, and I'll not only try to keep the conversation going, but I'll try to make more of these videos just for you, my viewers. Finally, as always, thanks so much for watching.